Welcome, Rise of Industry fans, to Rise of Industry with Omnius Prime. Episode 1, How to Succeed and Profit, The Plan. Normally, when uh, someone starts one of these uh, video series to show you how to do something, they start off with basically a blank map. Um, here, I'm well into the game. Um, right now, what I'm going to show you is a little fireworks display. As in my uh, city of Gasquit, I'm just about to level up. Now, I can do this one of two ways. I could deliver five wall panels to Gasquit, or I could deliver and deliver seven bricks, or I could pay uh, 1.31 million instead of delivering the wall panels and pay out uh, 412,000 for um, um, instead of paying out the bricks. But I've got money. I'm going to go ahead and just um, click those out. Oops, I forgot to pick the store, didn't I? So let me open that up. And I have a choice between a clothing store construction goods, grocery store, ironmongery, or toy store. I'm going to select clothing store as that was uh, what I decided to kind of specialize in. And here you can see you get a nice little fireworks display. And uh, Gasquit has 173,000. It's prospering. I picked it up um, from one of the AIs. So now what I want to do is I want to go to pool because basically I'm at end game and I'm just getting ready to win the game. So I decided that, uh, okay, let's just go ahead and close that out. So here we are in the automobile mega factory. I have a car prototype that is almost finished then it will be delivered to this warehouse before it's delivered to the showroom in um, in pool so now pool was my original city now as you can see I have a zeppelin line here uh, set up between um, two of my cities actually the Bell Valley which is at the other end of the map from um, from pool so I decided yep I need a Zeppelin route so let's see now am I just about uh, got the car done almost done so what we're waiting for is a little vehicle to come out of oh there did it come out bingo so there's the truck with the car going to the warehouse let's get the clock running again Then it'll drop off the, the car to the warehouse, and then a truck will deliver the car prototype over here on the left side to this showroom right over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and speed it up a little bit. And as you can see, I have some very busy traffic. And bingo, I won the game with 76,069 points. So, now that you've seen that um, I know how to win the game, let's go back and show you how I did it. Here I am at the uh, front end screen of Rise of Industry. So I'm going to start a new game as a career. Career is kind of which y y there's different things you can do here, but career is your normal play mode. So I'm going to pick career. Now, here you have a seed number, okay? This generates a map, and um, 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 you can control it. Now, I'm going to pick the seed number for the map I'm playing, which is 848. 262583. This will create the map that I'm basically playing on. Now, I chose few AI players. This way, on a large map, I'm only going to get two AI players instead of four. 
Uh, now that I've played with AIs once, I will never play with them again. Map size large, road area orientation is right, and I turned the assistant off. So let's check terrain settings. River curvature is medium. Uh, my coast amount is two. What that means is two sides of the map will have coastline. I can obviously you can change these things. Uh, oh, let's like I guess like ah there we go, like that to four. Now one uh, guy a person was posting on on the Steam discussion boards about how he got stuck with with in an island and couldn't uh, transport goods outside to the um, um, to the state. And it was because he picked four. So two is 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 good. Resource amount is I, I, I chose insane, crank it up. Resource richness, I chose very high. Smoothing is low. Lakes are few. Terrain flatness flat. Uh, river generation one, I don't want much. Coastal roughness smooth. I want kind of more smooth kind of coastlines. Uh, career difficulty options, uh, yeah, I went with the simplified production chains, uh, doing the traffic, uh, the pollution intensity is 100%, terraforming, yes, dispatch costs 100%, upkeep 100%, event difficulty normal, resource availability, I did uh, 100%, infinite resources, I went with yes. Um, one thing about build, the city building games is it really stinks when you start out with uh, some kind of mines or something like that, and all of a sudden your resources run out, your your mining buildings become worthless. So, so no, infinite resources, yes. Product pricing, 100%. Starting loan, $10 million. You can adjust these things. So now I'm going to play. Now, I'm going to be back in just a moment and at the map at the beginning. One thing I forgot to mention was um, seed number. I did mention it earlier when I was um, going through the uh, setup parameters uh, for this map. But uh, I saw a question on the Steam app, uh, the Steam uh, discussion board. Uh, one player wondering where the seed number is for a map. So what I want to do is show you that if you go into the menu, either by clicking on that or using the escape key, the seed number is in the bottom right-hand corner. It is the top line. So right here it'll tell me map seed 848-262-583. When I did regenerate the map with this map seed, uh, the map itself looked pretty close to what uh, this looks like, but it had different cities and stuff. So it might be that the map will, will replicate with the map seed, but it might be that like the regions and cities uh, where resources are placed and stuff, that might be different. Here we are back at the uh, generated map. Now I'm really glad that I didn't run us through the um, um, the map creation process, which takes about two to three minutes. So, so whenever you load a saved game or create a new map, expect to wait two to three minutes um, um, for the large map. And it's probably at least a good two minutes for like a smaller map. Now, let's take a look at some of the important decisions that we need to make right off the bat. First of all, the shop overview here is, is very useful. So now we see that we've got 11 regions, 11 cities, and each city is a region. Now we have two that have three. One is Bell Valley. Now if I go over here and use that little button, to, it'll take me to the farmer's market in Bell Valley. There is no, um, um, like a quote-unquote world map in the corner. 
uh, to help navigate between cities and regions. So what I found is this shop overview where this little button just to the left of, of that collapse button, okay, this will take me places. So Bell Valley. And the other thing I like about shop view is that it will show me the three shops Bell Valley has. Farmer's Market, Hardware Store are the standards in every city. You see the rest of the cities, there's 11 regions, and there are nine with two stores, and they're all Farmer's Market and Hardware Store. But not all of them um, um, want the same items for sale. Some items are, 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 are uh, almost universal between cities, and, and some are resources are not. Now, here we have the third store, which is an ironmongery. And you can get up to seven stores in a city. So this kind of, you know, like here I can uh, go for steel, copper wire, copper tubing, okay, these kind of things. Now, resources are, are very important. So what I need to do is I've already done the tab key to show what resources. Now, this is the other key. Not only the stores and what they want to, to, to sell, um, but also the resources. Here, like, there's three different types of resources, copper, oil, and uh, copper, oil, and gas. Gas, very important. So let's go back to pool. Now, I passed on Bell Valley. I didn't quite like the combination of items that Bell Valley was wanting. So now let's go back to pool. If I can get my clumsy little mitts to get the mouse crew over there. So here's pool. And as you can see, you know, it, look, it wants some lumber. Now, what it'll do is there's pricing from like 150% down to 120%. So some items are going to be, uh, have higher profit margins per se than other items, okay? And the farmer's market. Now, the reason I chose pool was that here I have mutton and wool. These come from a sheep farm. So I can have a sheep farm that sells both products. Okay. Um, here I have leather and milk. So I'm going to wait on building a cattle farm because what I don't have is a demand for the, for the meat. So I don't have demand for beef. The other thing, um, so I kept looking around, okay, you know, here's the uh, gas and oil, which I have in this region, okay. Now, I happen to like the, the, the gas, oil, copper combination, because yes, there's three um, um, different types of resources available. Uh, let's see, can I come over here to Indianapolis? Now, here in Indianapolis, there's the coal and iron ore combination. Um, but I found that this three combo of copper, oil, and gas was the best because of the gas. The gas will allow me to um, um, refine it into chemicals, which will drive the chemical scrubber um, um, pollution plants. But I'll get into that more often and more later on. But the gas, oil, copper combination, that's what I like. And I want to pick one of the cities that's got three stores. And I uh, ran through maybe a week of generating maps before I kind of finally just decided, okay, I'm just going to play with this one. Now, the other important thing is you want a city to, to, to want wheat. So that, because wheat will um, um, help you with the animals. Okay, so then you can have the um, um, sheep, beef, cattle, or um, chicken farms. Okay. Now, the other thing is, is here we have things like vegetables, uh, apples. Now, there's only four apples per 15 days. Now, this runs kind of like on a 30-day month. Okay, all months are 30 days even February, even January, December, all 30 days. 
So it's kind of like you have to think in cycles. So if it's four per 15 days, it means eight per month for 30 days. And things are, are produced basically in a 30-day period. So here I have uh, eight demand for vegetable, which would double to 16. Nine would go to 18, okay? Nine here for the coal would give me 18 per month. Wood, 18 per month. Cotton here is five doubled for 10 per month. So once you get the idea, now price is important, <coughs> but even more important is volume, okay? So like here, apples, four doubled is eight. I'm not going to, I didn't mess with apples because the volume was not there, okay? I went with oranges, which was 918 per month even though it's 130% price instead of 140% price. So volume is very important. And I decided to go for the for, for, for pool because of the clothing store. Um, dye requires water and berries, okay? And I just happen to be able to sell berries, okay? So, so I can use berries, just direct sell. I can use it in dye. Okay, uh, the fibers require cotton, and here I'm be able to sell cotton. So, so I can grow cotton. I can sell a little bit of the excess back to my um, um, store in pool. So this is one of the things that I'm really looking for. Okay, and then some of these items like light fabric just require fibers and dye. So once we've made these, we can use in dye, we can sell directly to the city. But now we can also use it in, in a, what's called like a, a tier one pro, a tier two product. The fibers are a tier one. The light fabric is a tier two. The summer clothes require light fabric and dye. They're a tier three product. So I found the clothing store to be a really good choice as that third store um, to be able to build it up. Now, we have two things that we have to do. One is place a headquarters in any region. So here we have an administrative building, a headquarters. Now, some people will show you, you know, plop the headquarters <clears throat> down in the city here. Uh-uh. I did that a couple of times and I realized no that's not it now you see that little yellow thing that's sticking out from it that's your road connection so what I did is I built my headquarters over here so that I didn't have it get in the way of pools expansion so now I placed my headquarters now the other thing I need to do tech tree so yes this game has um, um, research in it which is really fun now you have three free unlocks available only for the first and second row the first and second row so now the first row is going to cost me two hundred thousand and sixty days of research time i'm going to spend one hundred thousand in r and d i could go to zero but you definitely in these games you got to research so what do i research well, how about wheat? Okay, this is a 200K. Now, how about livestock? Okay, because livestock, I can get two or three products out of um, something. Now, here, sheep requires water and wheat. Cows, water and wheat. Chickens, water and wheat. Okay, so that's why you choose wheat. And that's why you also want wheat as, as, as a, a saleable product in your... Uh, store so now this is a level two um tech four hundred thousand 120 days to to build so better so I'm, I'm i'm looking at tier two things we have all kinds of things we have drinks you can do carpentry i could you know turn lumber into wooden planks but i got to have somewhere to sell these things okay and here's the textile plant okay this is uh, early on where I'm going to come down and get the cotton, the berries, 
okay, and all this stuff to start making um, um, goodies here. Down to the car prototype, which, as you can see, this was what I ended up researching and building to win the game. Fields and harvesters, these are very important. I'll be going through them with you. Logistics and administration, okay. Here is some important things, your pollution buildings, okay. Uh, the AIs do not build pollution buildings, and their uh, city growth is stunted because of that. So we have a few choices here. Um, build urban roads is going to be my choice, 400,000. So as you can see, what I've done with my three free unlocks was pick $1 million worth of research. Okay, and this also another 120 days. So and and, and uh, so 240, 300 days of, of research for free that I've just packed up. So I want to build the urban roads because dirt roads are slow, and you might as well start with urban roads to increase truck speed. But also this way, when you build roads, you build them once. Now I need to um, 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 build something to unlock for to, to get started and I think it's going to be the vegetable field I uh, <laughs> in the next one I'll probably know what it was so come back here to pool and yeah because the vegetable field was was the 150 percenter okay now, I'll also fill in the um, tech tree and stuff. Now, I'm going to get to uh, want to do some building and stuff, but instead of actually showing you the building, um, I'm just going to cut to the to the next see, uh, scene and show you what I've already built. Back again, and now I can show you. <clears throat> so here's a, a bigger overview of my uh, region here to start. Now, the AIs, the two AIs, start here in Indianapolis and Brickerville. So they went for coal and iron ore, both of them. And they went for um, 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 size two cities instead of, neither one of them picked the, the Bell Valley, the size three city. Um, I saw recently the one of the developers of this game um, mentioning, uh, replying to to someone who said that the AIs uh, basically stink, weren't, were were not doing anything, and and the developer said, well, the AIs are non-competitive. So my advice is, don't play with the AIs. I'm going to show you later on why. Now. I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, they haven't built anything yet. So they've just made the choices, and I have to wait until uh, let the clock run to see what they build and where. Now, one of the uh, people mentioned about how the AIs um, 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 built big when they started to build. You know, when he started small. And you know what? Start small. Now, I, this is the third time that I actually started this. Because I knew I wanted to do videos. The first time was like, eh, was kind of learning. But I decided, you know, I got 10 years into it and decided that, uh, nah, this isn't quite what I want. Um, I was learning the game. So I, I went back and did it again, basically kind of copying what I'd done, but making some changes. And then I realized, man, I'm missing, you know, 10 years in. And then I realized, man, I'm missing the bet. I started off over on the right here near this copper field, but off in the ocean area um, where, where this um, um, little angle is, where it changes uh, the coastline a bit. And then I was looking at, I had my farms over here, and here's my farmer's market, Okay. And then I, I, I built my um, um, dye factories, berries, you know, all that other stuff uh, for the, for the uh, clothing store <laughs> over here. So I was crossing town. So I started again. And I decided, okay, I'm going to get smart, build, start my food over here. 
And of course, now that I've gone through this, I kind of realized that I, I even kind of eh, messed up this a little. I was like hung up on, okay, the farmer's market. So I built the road coming out from um, that little intersection here coming out. The other mistake that I made, I realized um, um, as I got past the 10 year mark is on pollution, especially traffic pollution. Is it sometimes you've got to be careful about warehouses, especially the uh, exit ramp, um, as far as being able to to um, um, have your trucks come out and they create pollution. So you don't want to put your dog on farms because, I mean, in several places, and I'm going to show you, I ended up having to uh, um, delete bulldoze a farm, I mean, a, a, a field. And then put a, a air a purifier a pollution control plant in. So, what I've done is I've started. I've got a wheat field, wheat one. Okay, I've got sheep one. Okay, so here I can I can generate. I bring in one water, one wheat, and I can create one mutton and two wool to sell to the stores. Okay. Now, as you can see, what I've got is uh, I've got three wheat fields. I've got three sheep fields, okay? Now, these are what are, you know, kind of like called harvesters, the fields and the harvesters, okay? Now, I have this water plant right here, and it's generating six water per month, okay? I got three pumps. They produce two water. So like one water every 15 days. So what I've got here, and now these wheat will produce, um, let's come back over here, and one water in will give us two wheat coming out, okay? So I need basically three water here, and I need same thing here. One water, one wheat gives me the mutton and the two wool, so two inputs get me three outputs and in 30 days. So now, the, one of the important things is, is balancing inputs and outputs. And later on, uh, one of the texts I'm going to get is going to allow me to add harvesters and fields. So we can go from three to five fields and five harvesters. So this can generate instead of six, as these are generating now, Okay, or three and six each here. Um, then they can generate like ten, and that'll be really cool. You know, here ten to fifteen. So one of the things of, is is planning production planning. Now, let's come up here. Let's take a, a quick look here. So I'm looking at pool. And I want to look at my farmer's market. Now, I've got seven uh, every 15 days, 14 demand, okay? My wool is eight every 15 days, 16 per month. I can got nine per 15 days, 18 per month, okay? So these are the three products that, that I can sell right away, okay, in my first little build here. Now... I could have 18 wheat. Now, why don't I build three wheat fields? Which is exactly what I did the first time. And I found out that was, was wrong. Because <clears throat> didn't take into account the expansion to five. So I ended up not being able to expand my wheat fields the first time around. Because um, I noticed that as the city grew... The demand for these products didn't change. I was expecting as the city grew, you'd see more demand. But for these items, the demand doesn't grow. So you've got to um, um, learn how to budget your production and take advantage of um, um, pricing. Now, pricing. As you, um, you, you, you have stored items, okay, so this means um, um, you can have items already delivered so that they'll be available there. Now, remember, they sell eight every 15 days. You're 
producing every 30 days. So you need to have something in storage for the in-between times um, for these stores to sell. So you do want to have storage. Um, the rule of thumb seems to be in the videos is that you want um, basically one month of storage, two cycles, two 15-day cycles. So I'd want to store 16 veggies or 18 wheat, and that would be the maximum I would want to store. Now, let's take a look at the warehouse. Okay, this is basically, um, now each of these has trucks, okay? Each of these little things has trucks, and you can decide how you want to deliver them. So here, um, you can see that the sheep field is delivering to the warehouse, the mutton and the um, um, wool, and it's on automatic. Here, I have my wheat field. It's on manual, okay? And I've got three wheat going to the sheep farm and three going to the warehouse. And I could have just set it on infinite here just so it gives gets rid of all of them. My water... As you can see, I've got three going to the wheat field. I've got three going to the sheep field. Okay, direct transportation. And there's a good reason for this. Every time you dispatch a truck, it costs you money. So you want to, to make a profit, you want to minimize the number of times you send your trucks out. So now, if I were to have sent my done auto send my water to the warehouse and i had did this the first time okay because 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 this automatic feature and, and and the range thing is it, just it's a nice simplification you know but there's a problem with it okay so if i send the water to the warehouse now the warehouse has to send a truck to deliver the water to the wheat and the sheep fields so now i've used two trucks instead of one so and i'm paying the truck cost twice so direct delivery from the harvester to 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 the wheat and sheep fields is what i want bypass the warehouse completely now here since these items are going to the warehouse to be shipped off uh, to the commercial sector i can leave it on auto and like here once again the wheat field it it, it has split output to the to the sheep field to the warehouse now the warehouse is going to deliver wheat to the farmers market and i sent set the max sent to 18 okay because 9 doubled is is 18 for the 30 days so one month supply farmers market whoops i think that should be 16 and uh, the wool 16. Let's double check my shop. I find the shop overview to be one of the most useful screens. So let's see. The uh, the mutton was 14. So see, I had this uh, set a little too high initially. Okay. So there's your supply chain. Now, what the warehouse is going to do is going to, as you can see, deliver to hardware store, farmer's market, and pool. Okay. Now, one of the things, you don't want to store too much because what's going to happen is the more you store, the lower the price is going to go. So this 150% might go to 140, 130. Um, if you set it to infinite and you store a whole bunch, you could... It, you, your price could collapse below 100%. So, um, first of all, do not overproduce. Do not oversell your products, okay? In, in other words, don't be a master of one. Be a jack of all trades. In, in your, you want to diversify your product line. So, let me give you, uh, uh, let me, whoops, no, let me keep the shop overview up. Let's get, Ah, let's get rid of some windows there. Let's get rid of this. And where do I want to go? I want to go back to the tech tree. Ah, okay, so it doesn't show. But now, 
what I've done is I filled out my, my, my research choices. It doesn't mean that I didn't make some changes around here. But as you can see, the vegetables was my first pick. Then I did sugar, rubber, berries, cotton, okay, dyes, fibers, orange juice, finally, okay, chemicals. There's where your gas comes in. And now here, this is basically in the efficiency area where I can increase the R&D monthly expense, uh, expense from 100% 100,000 per month to 250,000 per month. Uh, I can go up to a million, 2.5 million or 5 million. And then what will happen is the, the research will go much quicker. Okay. So I even thought out my stuff. Now, why did I choose those things? Well, let's look here. Sh sugar. Whoops. Come back here to pool. So now sugar is at 140% and 8 doubled is 16 uh, in volume. Okay, so that's what I want. Uh, the rubber, okay, is at 140%. Okay, and it wants 18 uh the berries okay seven doubled is 14 so yeah that's good i like that plus it's going to set me up for the um um the clothing store and the textile raw rubber okay nine doubled is 18. once again here i can build one of those and um, um make some money and then i did do the oranges because nine doubled is 18. i don't care if it's only 130 percent that's still money. It's the volume that counts. Okay. So that is my first um, um, run at it. And just let the clock run just a little bit. And it'll take just a moment before you start to see trucks start zooming around here. You can see there's little sheep or or. or roaming around and there we go there's my first set of trucks going in going out so i'm going to move on to the next uh segment here we are two months later it's june 1 <clears throat> and i was able to finish up the vegetables it's now starting on sugar i was also able to expand a little bit <clears throat> so i built another wheat farm to sell to the farmer's market, I built a vegetable farm. Now that that's done, two farms, one water source, okay? So, so you know, it's all about matching production, okay? Once again, now I've got half of the water, three, going to the vegetable farm. I've got half of the water, three, going to the second wheat farm. And I decided to kind of give everybody unique names. And the P stands for pool. Okay. So, so no, that's not P water. It's in, the, it's in yellow water. <laughs> now, the warehouse allows me now to sell a new product here. So I added in the farmer's market for the vegetables. Now, one of the things that, that uh, you know, the warehouse, you've got incoming products. Okay. You've got outgoing. Whoops. Now, what I didn't do here was turn off um, these outputs because I don't want the warehouse delivering water to the farms. I don't want the warehouse delivering wheat to the farms. Now, one of the reasons why is, is uh, <clears throat> right now, warehouse has 25 trucks. And I can easily handle delivering products back and forth, okay? Once again, you want to minimize the number of truck active activations you make. So this is why you want to go direct to the farms with the water, not to the warehouse and warehouse to the farms. But also as, as, as you build up um, more and more businesses tied to this warehouse, um, you don't want to overload the trucks in the warehouse. Now, the first time around that I did this, when I had everything set up on automatic, where the warehouse trucks were, were um, um, delivering the water to the farms or the wheat to the sheep farm, 
on top of um, um, delivering to the stores, I found that I started to have um, trucking problems as far as not enough trucks for the um, for the volume that they need to carry. Now, since I finished up vegetables, I added an item um, the second row to the, on the far left item, and that's the air purifier right before the dye um, um, research project and the fibers because I'm going to need an air purifier to keep um, um, the dye and fiber plants clean. Okay, So I took pollution very seriously because pollution reduces um, town growth. And uh, it's all about growth. So this got me a little farther on, and I'm going to let the clock run now. So far, I haven't sold anything because it takes a couple of months for these farms to get going, especially like the sheep farm where first I've got to get the wheat farm going, delivering its products to either the sheep farm or the warehouse before the sheep farm can finally start producing sheep to send to the warehouse to send to the store. So I'm going to be back in a moment and show you my next build. Now we're in October 1st. So we've gone through the first six months of um, um, running the game. And as you can see over here, I'm starting to generate a profit. Now, um, I'm an accountant. I've been an accountant for 40 years. So... I'm, always, I'm really good at these, these uh, city building games, anything that involves finances. And uh, so as you can see, very quickly, I'm turning a profit, okay, uh, which is important early on. You don't want to just dig yourself in a big financial hole. So sometimes it's better to start small and build up rather than build a whole bunch of stuff and... Um, 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 then you start losing money real quick off the bat. So now my expansion is such that uh, I decided over here I'm going to build a second warehouse. Now I've got the rubber and sugar. So after getting the, the sugar and rubber um, um, researched, you can see I'm at the berries and cotton. Then I can start the uh, air purifier before I can do the dye and stuff. Down here at the bottom, I've added the uh, chemical scrubber plant down um, on the bottom row in the middle. And over on the right in the bottom row <clears throat> is, um, you know, let's come over here, harvesters. Now, this plus 10 gatherer storage is absolutely worthless. Um, you don't really need to increase storage in this game, but what I need to do is get down to these harvesters, the plus two coastal harvesters, the plus two land harvesters. So here I can expand my water plants to generate, uh, go from three pumps to five, generate instead of six water, 10 water per month, two extra land harvesters, um, I can add I can add two more fields to my farm. So instead of producing six, like veggies, I can produce ten. Um, same with you know the um, um, animals and stuff like that. And then over here you can see where I'm expanding farms and the livestock and stuff like that. Oh yeah, the plus uh, the two land harvesters. That's going to come in for the um, um, oil and gas. So oh, for, 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 for those uh, uh, kind of like dirty raw resources. So now I'm down to 4.16 million out of the initial $10 million loan that uh, I had. So if I come back over here, it shows I could take out a loan. But it shows that here I have my start alone. $10 million, it'll be 120 payments and 83.33 uh, $1,000 per month when it starts, and I think something like about the second year. The interest rate is 0%. It's free money. Never, ever, ever pay back the starter loan, okay? It's free money. Do not 
pay it back. It will start taking the 83.33 thousand out of your um, um, money each month, the first day of the month <clears throat> for those 120 months. Let it pay off automatically. Do not pay it prematurely. Okay, free money is free money. So now, as you can see, I've uh, um, routed this a little differently. I've got my my um, lumber harvesters here. I've got the, the the sugar and rubber over here, and I've got it coming into to the town over here. Uh, I did not connect it down to the other road because I want uh, to kind of keep the traffic separate. Traffic control is going to be important. Um, now I've seen some. Uh, you know, like on the, the STEAM uh, uh, um, um, workshop or, 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 or in the um, the guides and stuff. You know, people, you know, doing the silly-ass spreadsheet return on investment calculators and all this other nonsense. No, you don't need that. You just need to know, do not sell too much. Do not produce too much. Um, basically, my rule of thumb is... An empty warehouse is a profitable warehouse. If you're storing, storing items in a warehouse, you're not making enough money. Okay, You need to push your products out. That's why you don't want to overproduce. Because then you have to sell to the state at 100%. And like in my case here with pool, I have to run product all the way over here to Indianapolis that runs it to Bell Valley. Now you can see over here the AI is uh, kind of starting off a little small with some orchards. Uh, I guess it's not doing anything here. Here we go, some more uh, doing some sugar fields. Now it's doing a water well. I do not research the water well. It's worthless, 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 worthless. There's a really cool... Um, 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 terraforming trick that you can play to make some water and um, um, get your water that way pretty cheap and anywhere on the map and the, it, it just it's just so much better so um, as you can see starting to make some money and I'll be able to make some more money as uh, things go along So I think what I'm going to do is kind of, um, I think, wrap this episode up, okay? I'm going to, like, let's run the clock. Now, as you can see, you see how those trucks are coming back and forth, okay? And uh, now the other trucks here are starting to shape up and stuff. So now in the next episode, I'm going to... Um, what I did is I played this game all the way through. I've got about uh, 45 different um, places where I saved the game. Decision points where, okay, let's spend a little mon money and move on to my next step in, in the development of my, um, um, of my city and region. And, and I'll show you other aspects of the game. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode and found it informative. And that uh, you'll, if you're a brand new player, that you'll be able to use the advice I've given here and get off to a good um, um, early start.